The reading from the Acts of the Apostles tells us that the Christian church was now ready to take the greatest of all steps. They had decided, quite deliberately, to take the message of the gospel of Jesus to the entire world. Chapter 13, chapters 13 and 14 of Acts tells us about the first missionary journey and the first members of the early church who went in mission. It was a decision taken under the direct guidance of the Holy Spirit. The members of the early church never did what they wanted to do, but always what God wanted them to do. They prayed to be guided by the Holy Spirit and always spent time in prayer discerning what the Spirit of God was calling them to do. It's for that reason that Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical on missionary activity, reminds all of us that the Holy Spirit is both the source and the author of missionary activity. And we too are called to discern the movement of God's Spirit. We are called to participate in an historic project that comes from God and belongs to God. Commenting on the the reading of the Acts, I looked up some notes and a scripture scholar pointed out something that if I hadn't read it, I would have missed, quite frankly. He helped me to appreciate that the list of the prophets in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is really symbolic of the universality of believers. Barnabas was a Jew from Cyprus. Lucius came from Cyrene in North Africa. Simeon was also a Jew, but his other name, Niger, is given here, and since this is a Roman name, it obviously was a man who had been and lived in Roman circles. Manayan was a man with aristocratic connections, and Paul himself was a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia and a trained rabbi. To me, it was a very interesting insight because what we see is that before the first missionary activity, we have already a multinational and a multicultural group that is sending them out. It's the reality of our church today. It's the reality of our church in Canada. In this archdiocese alone, Mass is celebrated in 38 different languages. Canada is a multicultural nation, and it's good to remind ourselves of the need to listen of the need to be patient, tolerant, and above all, discerning. How is the Holy Spirit being revealed to us today in this rich diversity that we call Canada? There's a plaque outside my office door, which I put there, but it reads as follows. The world in which you were born is just one model of reality. Other cultures are not failed attempts at being you. They are unique manifestations of the human spirit. I would add the Holy Spirit. Pope John Paul II reminds us in that same encyclical that in relating to each other and in dialogue with each other, we have to have, and he puts it this way, deep respect for everything that has been brought about in human beings by the Spirit who blows where he wills. Let's listen again to the words of Jesus in today's reading. I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. For me, the essence of the teachings of Jesus has to do with relationships. Relationships to God, relationships to each other, and relationships to creation. Yesterday at a conference on universal human rights, Pope Benedict made the following comment, which to me is most striking because it has to do with relationships. And he said, for Christians who regularly ask God to give us this day our daily bread, it's a shameful tragedy that one-fifth of humanity still goes hungry. The message of Jesus is about relationships. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to patiently listen and respectfully discern, to discover what it is that God is calling us to do. I may have used this text before, but you'll forgive me if I'm getting old and I forget, but it's taken from the words of a bishop who's giving counsel to those of us who have gone in cross-cultural mission. It's applicable to all of us living 
in the multicultural reality that is Canada of today. He said, help us to discover our riches. Don't judge us poor because we lack what you have. Help us discover our chains. Don't judge us slaves by the type of shackles you wear. Be patient with us as a people. Don't judge us backward simply because we don't follow your stride. Be patient with our pace. Don't judge us lazy simply because we can't follow your tempo. Be patient with our symbols. Don't judge us ignorant because we can't read your signs. Be patient with us and proclaim the richness of your life which you share with us. Be with us and be open to what we can give. Be with us as a companion who walks with us, neither behind nor in front, in our search together for life and ultimately for God. Let that be our prayer and our search and ask this day for the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that we may appreciate the other. Please stand. We remember this day and this celebration, the many people who share this Eucharist with us via television, and many who have written and asked that we remember their intentions. For them and for those intentions, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the victims of war, the victims of war in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. For all the victims of war, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the grace to be peacemakers, that we may have peace in our hearts and be able to live as peacemakers. For that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And Lord God, we ask you to receive us, be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity, cleanse us from our sin. And pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And look upon these gifts, O God, as we recall the gifts you gave to blessed Francois de Laval. Make joyful in your praise those who have been graced by his labors, and grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts Amen. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You give the church this feast in honor of, Saint <clears throat> of Blessed Francois de Laval, and you inspire us by his holy life. Instruct us by his preaching and give us your protection in answer to his prayers. We join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. <laughs> 